What's up guys, Andrew Bainer here, and on today's video I'm going to be demoing the GOC Guitars Materia 7 string. For this demo I am tuned to drop G sharp and I'm going to be playing a snippet of a song called Laurentian Ghosts by a band called After the Burial. This is how this guitar sounds. <laughs> Before we get started on the specs, I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to GOC Guitars for sending this one over to me. Um, since they sent it to me, obviously I might have a little bit of bias, but I'm going to try my hardest to be as transparent as possible during this demo and review. So first and foremost, like I said, this is a 7 string guitar. Obviously I got this in the green finish, they had them in a bunch of other really cool finishes like purple, blue, natural, so on and so forth. Of course, when I saw green, that's what I chose. Uh, this guitar in particular has a Swamp Ash body, it has GOC Guitars own pickups which are I believe called the 4th Dimension pickups, it has a Venge or Wenge or however you say that wood type fretboard, the neck is maple with again Wenge stripes, in addition to that it has a 3 way pickup selector, a single volume knob which I like, I hate tone knobs so I'm glad that this guitar did not come with one, the neck is reinforced with dual carbon fiber rods, and it also has these inlays on the low uh, side of the neck, which are maple inlays. Um, there's been some talk about these. Some people wish that they were angled along with the frets because it's a fan fret guitar, but they're actually straight. I personally don't think this is an issue at all. When I'm looking at the guitar and I'm playing, I'm only seeing this side of the inlay anyway, so it doesn't really bother me what the top looks like. So I guess it's just an aesthetic thing. I personally think it looks pretty cool with having them straight. It's a nice little change up from everything being all angled, I don't know, but maybe that's just my personal opinion. And the final spec to talk about, of course, is the scale length. So as you can see, this is a multi-scale fan fret guitar. What this means is that it is 25 and a half inch scale on the high E string and 27 inch on the low B string or whatever your tuning is, you know what I'm talking about. So I think that pretty much covers it for specs. As for the song which I was demoing earlier, I was using this guitar, I used the bridge pickup for all the rhythm tones and the neck pickup for the lead tones. I didn't really use the middle pickup position, but I never really used that anyway, so I kind of just skipped out on that. But of course that's an option, so I was just using the bridge or the neck. I was getting all the tones using a new plugin by Neural DSP, which I can't quite talk about yet, but you guys will see it very soon. So with all the specs and the technical information out of the way, I'm going to move on to my feelings on this instrument, what I like and what I didn't like. So first and foremost, I want to go over the things that I did like. Number one is this fretwork is insane. I have never had a guitar that has these ball end frets. As you can see in the close up shots, they basically are completely rounded off on the end. Super, super cool looking and they feel extremely comfortable. They're also stainless steel frets, which is usually not a thing you get at this price point. Again, this guitar is only $690 US, so for that price, that is pretty crazy. I also am always a huge fan of this open pour swamp ash finish. I have it on a couple of my other guitars, like my Balaguer Archetype and my Fast Guitar 7 string. So love, love feeling the wood grain through that Swamp Ash. It feels awesome and it looks great. 
Uh, in some lighting, this kind of looks yellow, but in person, it definitely looks more green. And depending on the angle you kind of rotate the guitar at, you can actually see a lot of shine coming through on that swamp ash, and that looks really cool. The other thing that I was pleasantly surprised by was the pickups. Initially, when I got this guitar, I was a little bit worried that it might sound a little bit strange because the pickups, while they are angled, I don't know if you can tell in the close-ups, but normally with fan fret guitars, the pickups are angled and then also offset so that the pull piece is perfectly aligned with the string. But in this case, you can see that that's not really what they did. They just angled the pickup, but it looks like it's just a normal straight scale seven string pickup. It's just rotated. I thought that might cause some issues since the pull pieces don't completely align properly, but it doesn't really seem to matter as much as I thought it would. It's maybe a little bit of a thing that bugs me aesthetically because I think it looks better if the pull pieces do align. But in terms of sound, I personally noticed no difference to my other fan fret guitars. And I thought the pickups actually sounded really good. So again, these are just their stock uh, in-house pickups and they sound awesome. I really really like the bridge pickup especially. It sounds great for super low tune chugs. Again I was in drop G sharp and it had no problem keeping up. So now I'm going to move on to the things I dislike. There's only a couple things but I definitely feel like they're worth mentioning. Uh, number one is I find this guitar to go out of tune a little bit more frequently than I would like. It's not like super out of tune but it's definitely noticeable when you're recording that you know, after every, let's say, five takes, you definitely want to tune up a little bit. Um, so I don't know if maybe that's an issue with just the setup, and if I got that fixed up, that might alleviate some of those problems, but as it stands now, out of the box, tuning stability is good, but not great. Uh, the second thing, speaking of tuning, that I noticed is the second string here, which I have tuned to D-sharp, consistently kept going out of tune. Every time I picked it, it just went down and down and down. And then I realized that the reason that was happening is because this bridge piece was actually not screwed down to the body uh, tightly enough. So the entire bridge piece was actually moving. So again, I was able to fix that quite easily once I figured out what the issue was. I just took the string back off, moved the bridge piece back to where I wanted it to be and just screwed it down extremely tight. And ever since then, it hasn't really been a problem. So that's good, but you know, kind of a weird thing to have to do out of the box that I wasn't quite expecting. And the final thing that I wanted to mention about this guitar that I don't like is the low string is too close to this side of the neck. And what I mean by that is when I press down on a fret, there's some occasion where I actually accidentally push the string completely off the fretboard. So I don't know if that's because the fret ends are too short or if the string is just honestly too close to the edge of the fretboard. But either way, it's kind of annoying. It doesn't happen that often, but when it does, you know, when you're playing a riff and then your string goes over the nut or over the neck it's you know not quite what you're expecting and maybe that's just my playing style maybe some other people aren't going to have that issue but i guess when i fret i have a tendency to run the string straight off the neck so that's kind of annoying but not the end of the world it still works fine after you get used to it and play it for you know a few songs then you kind of adjust your playing style a little bit so that you don't accidentally do that quite as often, but I definitely felt like it was worth mentioning. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this guitar. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised. For $690 US, this is pretty crazy. I have never seen a headless fanfare guitar at a price this low, and um, yeah, I'm just overall pretty impressed. There's a couple little hiccups here and there, but at this price point, that's kind of acceptable in my opinion. Um, of course, you guys can make your own opinions and be the judge if that's where you want to spend your money or not. If you do want to learn more about GOC guitars, they're going to be linked in the description below, as well as a pinned comment. Once again, I want to give a big shout out to GOC guitars for sending this one over to me. I've had a lot of fun playing it so far, and I'm sure it'll pop up in quite a few of my future videos. If you're interested in getting the DIs from this video and playing around with guitar tones for yourself, you can get all of that on my Patreon, which is linked in the description below as well. So you can get all the DI tracks and hear how it sounds through your setup, through your plugins, and all that. That's pretty much it for this video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know any questions or comments you have about this guitar in the comments below. I'm sure you are going to do it anyways, but it doesn't hurt to ask anyways. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Look forward to reading your comments, and I'll see you guys next time.